Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to revisit the on-premises data gateway. Did a video about this about a year and a half. Things have changed. If you're finding us for the first time, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from Guy in a Cube. I mentioned before that I did a video on this about a year and a half ago. Obviously with the speed of Power BI, things are changing. And so I wanted to cover again the on-premises data gateway. And there's gonna be a few videos after this to talk about some of the aspects of the gateway itself. Before we actually jump into the gateway, just remember that the on-premises data gateway can actually be used for more than just Power BI. There's other services that can take advantage of this, such as Power Apps, Microsoft Flow, Logic Apps, Azure Analysis Services. So one gateway can be installed and you can use that with all of the services that are supported by the on-premises data gateway. So what better way to actually dig into the on-premises gateway than, you guessed it, Let's head over to the computer. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to download the gateway. It's kind of hard to install it if we haven't downloaded it. To download the gateway, just go to the little down arrow in the upper right, and then we can choose data gateway. That'll take us to the gateway page where we can select download gateway. It should be pretty quick. It'll be this Power BI gateway installer.exe. One question I get a lot is how where do I install the gateway? What's the best place to install that gateway? And the answer that I give is you want to install it as close to the data source as possible. I joke around a little bit and say, what's the closest that you can get to the gateway? Obviously on the actual machine that the data source is running on itself. But in the case of like SQL Server, I'm not advocating that you install the gateway on a production SQL Server. The next best thing would be to install it on a machine that's on the same subnet, so it's relatively close. The whole goal is to reduce latency between the gateway and the data source as much as possible. Now, the best way that you can do this, find out the data center that Power BI is running in. So for example, if I go into Power BI, I can go to the question mark, I can go to about Power BI, and I will see here that I'm running in West US. So then I would want to spin up a virtual machine in West US, stick the gateway on that machine. So now it's in the same data center as Power BI. Ideally, you would wanna also have your data source in that same data center too. So in the case of SQL Server, for on-premises SQL Server, you'd wanna install that into a VM that's inside of the Azure West US data center. At that point, you have reduced internet latency altogether. You're inside of the same data center, you're just gonna sit inside of that network. So that's the best possible case. So you'll just need to figure out from your topology and your environment, what's the closest you can get it to the data source to reduce that latency. All right, let's go ahead and install it. We'll jump over to my SQL Server now. I said don't install it on your production SQL server. This is obviously a test machine, so I'm just doing this for illustration purposes. All right, we'll go to, I'll go ahead and install this Power BI gateway. Okay, the first thing you're gonna see here is whether or not we want to install this either in personal mode or not, which I refer to as enterprise mode. The personal mode is the personal gateway. We're not really focused on that in this video, but just know that that's available for you if you want, only if you grab the installer from powerbi.com. If you grab it from Power Apps or from Flow or another service that supports it, you won't see this option. So we're gonna to wanna to choose on-premises data gateway for the enterprise piece of this. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. So now we've gotta configure this thing. So let's go ahead and hit next. Where do we wanna put it? Yep, install it. Go ahead and say yes. All right, what email address do we wanna use this with? I'm gonna go and put in a sax and a guy in a cube and then we'll hit sign in. This is gonna register this gateway with the Power BI service based on my tenant login. You cannot use a single on-premises data gateway with multiple tenants. It's tied to a specific tenant. All right, we'll sign in, enter my password. All right, so now we've got a choice. We can either register a new gateway on this computer or we can migrate, restore, or take over an existing gateway. To migrate, restore, or take over, you're gonna need what's called the recovery key and you'll see that in a second. For this purpose, we're going to register a new gateway. All right, so we gotta give it a name. We'll call it Fabricon. You get an option here to add to an existing gateway cluster. So one of the things that we introduced recently is this concept of a gateway cluster. So this is all about high availability. So I can register multiple physical gateways 
into a single gateway cluster. So the idea here is if one of them goes down, another one steps up to service requests. So that way you don't have any interruption. So think of this kind of like a failover cluster of sorts. So in this case, it's just gonna be the first one and we don't have a gateway cluster we're gonna add it to. Uh, this is where we can enter the recovery key. It's just a passphrase. You can put in whatever you want. Just make sure that you remember it and that you store it in a safe place because if you need it later, this is gonna help you. If you don't remember it and you can't enter it when you need to restore the gateway or migrate the gateway, you will have to reconfigure all of your data sources. So be aware of that. All right, we're gonna hit configure. All right, this gateway is now online and ready to use. There are other services that I may have to do additional configuration in. So Azure Analysis Services is one of those. Power Apps and Flow is ready to use and Power BI is ready to use. This gateway piece here also allows you to do some other configuration items. You can always open this on the machine it was installed. You can restart the gateway. You can change the service count if you need it to be a domain account so that it works with your proxies. We have diagnostic capabilities here. If you want additional logging, uh, additional verbose logging, you can also export the logs. It'll stick all the logs on your desktop in a zip file. That's handy. And then from a network perspective, we can see whether or not we're actually connected to the Azure Service Bus and we can also enable what's called HTTPS mode. And what this does is it forces all traffic to Azure Service Bus over 443 instead of the non-standard ports that Azure Service Bus uses. So be aware of that. All right, let's head back over to Power BI. So now let's go and refresh. Now to manage that gateway that I installed, I can go up to the gear and then I can say manage gateways. And here I will see my existing gateway and I'll also see the new gateway that I had just installed called Fabricon. So if we go there, I, I see all the information that was there that I put in. I can see that I've got my gateway cluster settings and I can list who's an administrator of this gateway. Whoever's an administrator is gonna see it in this manage gateways list. You can add as many as you want. You can add uh, security groups as well. And from here, I can go ahead and add a data source. So if I add a new data source, we'll call it SQL. Come down to SQL Server, we'll do, give it a database. I can basically set up anything I want now. We're gonna use the SA account because everyone should use that, right? I'm kidding, don't use SA for data connectivity. I'm just using this for illustration purposes. All right, we're gonna hit add. Uh, so under advanced settings, you can choose whether or not you wanna use single sign-on for direct query purposes. This does make use of Kerberos, so you will have to do some Kerberos configuration for the gateway itself. And I'll have a link down below to the documentation of what you need to do for that. All right, so let's go ahead and hit add. And then it's gonna say connected successful. The users tab is another piece of this. So the users tab, you're gonna to wanna to use this, add the users in there that are basically your report authors or people that are gonna use this data source from either a direct query or an AS Live Connection perspective so that they have access to use this data source. The consumers of the reports do not need to be in this list. Only the people that are publishing from Power BI Desktop or using Get Data to pull Power BI Desktop files in, they will need to be in this users list to be able to utilize the actual gateway and that data source. Okay, let me add another data source into this list real quick. All right, once your data sources are created, you can go ahead and start using them. So let me head over to a data set. We'll go ahead and get Toso Sales. We'll go to configuration for that. And you'll see now that I've got two gateways available under use a data gateway. That's because I've got two data sources configured, one for each gateway for the same data source. So I can pick which one that I want to use. And if you're doing this from a direct query or a, an AS Live connection perspective, if there's multiple gateways, you'll get a dialogue asking you which gateway to actually associate this data set with. And so I can go ahead and select the one that I want. I'll go ahead and choose Contoso, the Contoso gateway here because it is Contoso sales. And I'll hit apply. And then boom, I'm now set up in this case for schedule refresh. I'll have some links down in the description below with regards to documentation for troubleshooting and for other items. And I'll have a couple links up here for other videos that may help you get this set up and running. Do you have any other questions about the on-premises data gateway? If you do, leave that down in the comments below and we will get back to you. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.